It was a scratch. Sorry. Craving was written and directed by Jay Horton, who's done films such as The Other Side, The Campus, that apparently a lot of this cast worked on, so I'll absolutely have to check that out at some point, and also The Sin Choice, as well as Shorts. Check out his IMDb page for the full listing, and was also written by Gregory Blair, who has done Shorts and The Convent, that had some pretty interesting artwork for the covers, so I should check that out as well. And this is centered around a bunch of people. They're in a bar. There are people working at the bar, patrons at a bar. And then suddenly some people show up with guns and they're holding up in there because there are some people that want to get at them. Why? Because there is a monster among this particular group of people. Who's the monster? Well, they have to solve this mystery before everybody is monster dinner history, craving tales, woohoo. So this apparently was a crowdfunded indie horror movie and... While I'm sure it got a sizable amount of money, you can obviously tell this is very indie and very micro-budgeted, so they had to have ingenuity when it came to revealing the secrets and making the most of the fact this had an 83-minute runtime. It was taking place in one location, and the cast wasn't... The cast is decent, but I do have to say, because it is a micro-budget indie movie, <clears throat> that there were moments where I was like, Okay, some of the acting parts were good, and then other parts where I'm like, wow, that could have done with another take. That being said, this is more of a throwback to the 70s and 80s. You know, like, horror movies where you eventually reveal stuff. Actually, it sort of reminded me of the 40s and 50s, maybe even the early 60s sci-fi monster-type movies, where they finally reveal all the stuff where, like, holy shit, I didn't expect that, or oh my god, that's what they were going for? Really, really cool. There were some positives to this. Some great practical effects and gore effects. Some great, you know, violence. Some great usage of blood. There were points, though, where it just seemed like when the violence was happening, they were just taking some raw hamburger and tossing it among packs of blood and corn syrup. <laughs> but once things start happening, it does actually have a pretty good closing third act. But it does take its time revealing all this stuff and has flashbacks, a lot of flashbacks, to reveal stuff about... The particular characters and find out how all these people came together and how they banded together because they are taking over this bar and holding up to try and be away from this one particular group led by a guy named Hunter played by Al Gomez not Al Gomez Adams because Gomez Adams was a completely different film and television series rest in peace Raul Julia but Hunter is bound determined to finally find out and center on who the monster among this group is. He knows, but the audience doesn't know, even though you probably can figure it out pretty early on. <laughs> so, uh, a couple of other praiseworthy things. Uh, there are, and I'm just going to say right now, some actresses in this that are particularly attractive that could really do some great things in horror and otherwise. I do want to shout a few. I do want to say one to, uh, or give a shout to the character of Gail, played by Holly Rockwell. She has... A good quality about her. She plays the conflicted individual, the leader of the group. There's Mac, Kevin, uh, Caliber. Yes, Caliber. Not even kidding. He's fine. <laughs> and then there is Frenzy, Ashley Undercuffler, who is beautiful and a great bitchy um, you know, protagonist here. She's actually pretty good, or antagonist, as it were. Rachel, Amanda Bryan, who plays the uh, bar, uh, the bar hop, the bartender, as it were. Shiloh. And there's Kelsey Matthews, who's only in it for a little bit. But to me, it's like, okay, she has a good look. Let's put her in more stuff. So I'm going to seek out, you know, more movies that these particular actresses are in just to see, hey, you know, where has their career gone? Or where have their respective careers gone? So yeah, basically, since it's centered in one location, sometimes it gets a little tedious. There are a few moments where I'm like, okay, it seems <clears throat> like people are just standing around while action scenes or you know, fights or whatever are going on, and I didn't quite understand the juxtaposition of those particular shots. But as far as the budget and far as what they had to work with, I think they did a pretty good job here. The acting, at times, again, isn't all that bad, and at other times, mm, wasn't all that great. But I have to give credit for the people for doing the most, and they obviously had a lot of fun doing this. And this had a few comedy elements, and... It does have that good throwback feel, so if you're looking for that, absolutely check it out. It is available on Amazon right now for, I think, about five, six bucks to rent. Um, throw a few bucks, because you know what? Don't pirate this stuff. That way, you know, people that direct this stuff, you know, starting small, can grow and do bigger, better projects. And honestly, it 
few bucks here and there, you know, from people, it helps out the actors immensely. I mean, even though it doesn't seem like it, that way you fund the people properly, and it's a good way to keep supporting filmmakers. So from there, that's pr uh, pretty much all I have to say about the movie before getting into the spoilers. It's not bad, it's not great, but it has a bit of charm to it. Even if it gets a bit long in the tooth, ironically, once everything gets revealed, <laughs> and there are a few uneven parts. So I'm going to get into spoilers, but yeah, again, on Amazon for a few bucks if you want to check it out. So there you go. Three, two, one, and spoilers. Okay, so there uh, is Gail. There was Gail and Carl. They were taking care of a boy named Will who has a scratch and has uh, needs his medicine. He needs a certain type of medicine. They're all recovering addicts, by the way. <clears throat> and I, I wanted to keep that for the spoiler part because... I really wanted to reveal all this in the spoiler section. But yeah, there are some recovering addicts among that group and among the bar patrons. The bar is a great place to hang out when you're a recovering addict, I guess. But there are certain relationships, or at least friendships, among these characters. <laughs> Frenzy, uh, Miss Undercuffler, does great as, you know, getting a chew, pretty much chewing the scenery. And I mean that with respect. And we get flashbacks and story about them. We find out about Hunter, why he is bound, determined to kill this monster because he's lost family members due to this monster. He lost his wife. How do you lose his wife to this particular monster? Well, there's Gail. There's Mac. Mac, who took over for Carl after Carl got shot. I'm sorry, I had to say that. And there's the boy, Will. And it turns out Will, and this is the best I could grasp from this whole thing <laughs> because he has a scratch and don't scratch you know don't scratch this he needs medicine and because it is dealing with drugs and addicts and stuff like that uh carl gives him heroin or at least you know stuff you inject and everything maybe a form of heroin whatever it is because they just they don't really tell they just show a little bit without actually revealing all the details to me, the what I got most from this is, is an allegory for children being born addicted because their parents, you know, because the dad used, especially the mother used, and the children, through no fault of their own, grow up addicted and grow up very, you know, hampered by the fact that they can't, you know, they can't, they can't deal with this and they have issues, health issues and otherwise, and they they have no idea how to control any of this stuff, control any of these urges that they are born with because their mother was addicted. And their mother was using. That's what I got from this. If I'm wrong, maybe the filmmakers can let me know in the comments. <clears throat> but because Will didn't get, or wasn't going to get his medicine, things start to happen. Things start to go a little awry. In the very beginning of the movie, um... Some cops arrive and find this girl. <clears throat> um, it turns out played by Rachel uh, Amanda Bryant, <clears throat> Shiloh, who is among all the people, and she's the only one to survive. And how is this the case? Well, all these relationships, all these flashbacks, and all this stuff leads to where Will ends up accidentally getting shot because everybody finally just goes absolutely insane. Frenzy, <clears throat> it turns out, is upset because this guy Hunter, who's standing outside with all his group of people outside this bar in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, seemingly. Hunter told her a few days before, by the way, your brother got killed and it was Gail and Carl that did it. And then Carl got killed sometime between this three-day period, or in this three-day period before all these events happened. And then Mac <clears throat> and Gail are trying to keep Will safe. And they're trying to keep Will safe because Will's a monster. Because when you don't <clears throat> give somebody their medicine... They unleash the monster. It's an allegory for how addiction can create a monster and a monster people can't control. Again, that's my interpretation of the whole thing. Because it ends up being kind of a silly horror movie with a decent message. Don't get me wrong. And then he transforms. Now this transformation scene takes a really long time. A really, really long time. In fact, I think that's where at least half the budget went. Now, I'm not knocking. They actually did some good practical effects here. Then he turns... And while there are a couple other people dead, um, and one girl gets beaten to death with a pool cue just before this, which is Cece, which actually is a pretty good scene, then the gore happens and, you know, the violence and the hamburger and all that stuff starts flying off. And all that stuff starts going, it starts going absolutely insane. Everybody's dying. Gail dies. Mac dies. Shiloh doesn't because she stabs him and then says to him, wait, what happened to you? It was a scratch. Sorry. <laughs> then she... Shakes his hand, but now suddenly the group, 
that was staying out there, Hunter's group, a couple people go in, they see Shiloh, and Shiloh gets shot. And then it turns out Shiloh's infected because addiction can be passed on, or addiction's a disease, or it's a demonic force, or something, or they just threw it all out the window and just said, fuck it, we need a sequel hook. And there you go. Or the craving can never be satisfied, and cravings of any variety can never be satisfied. And then she kills, and people die. And then that ends, and then they show some goofiness in the uh, credits that I assume were supposed to be outtakes or just them having fun or whatever. And it's far like a 75-minute horror movie, 75, 76 minutes until the end credits starts. It's fine. It's fine for what it is. Uneven, but fine. It accomplishes what it needs to. It doesn't need to have a great, great message, but it ends up having a pretty decent message. So I'm going to give it a B for the practical effects and the positives, even if I still have issues. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm Charm Replin. I'll see you soon.